bit late, but we can go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, Meg, do you mind just bringing the PowerPoint right up? We'll just get the train rolling. Awesome. Okay, so hello everybody. I am, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam Anthony. I am the membership and operations associate with the league. Um, thank you all for coming on International Women's Day uh, and uh, spending some time for our March edition of our local league capacity building series. Um, tonight we're going to talk uh, about websites. Um, so we'll go through some best practices. We'll talk a little bit about why they're important in the first place. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit of nitty gritty on how you can design one. And we'll go through some tips and resources that I have compiled. Um, so my goal tonight is not to, you know, tell you exactly how to build a website or bog anybody down with any sort of like real techy talk, but um, to sort of help you either think about your league's existing website in a new light, or if you're a league that doesn't have a website yet, or you're looking to, you know, give yours some updates um, to sort of get you off on the right foot and sort of demystify uh, the process of creating a website. Because I think uh, it is a lot less scary than some people would like to make it seem. Um, so yeah, Meg, you can go to the next slide. All right, one second. It's cool, take your time. So um, just to like start us off, um, I want to talk a little bit about why having a strong website is important in the first place. Um, obviously, we all know that the past few years have really seen kind of an incredible shift in a lot of things, not the least of which is the way we meet with and engage with each other and with new people, um, specifically that it's much more in a digital sort of way we connect and form a community with each other as opposed to in person. Um, and I know everybody, especially me, is you know excited to sort of quote unquote go back to normal, but um, I think it's safe to say that this change um, in how we create community and connect with people um, digitally is going to stay at the forefront of how we interact, especially with new people, new members, new other organizations, what have you, uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, a study recently showed uh, for the past couple of years that people have spent an average of six and a half hours a day online. So um, thinking about how we have a sustainable, engaging online presence is really important. Um, but I think personally that this presents a really exciting opportunity to think about how the league can communicate digitally with each other and how we can, you know, grow our impact um, with this really cool, you know, digital tool that we have. Um, so I guess like the question we're all trying to answer, right, is how can the league continue and um, further effectively fulfill its mission in the digital world? And having a website is a really, a strong engaging website is a really important part of that. Um, so we can go on to the next slide. <clears throat> So what can we do with a strong, engaging website? Why is it important? Um, having a strong website, and a website in general is one of those things that if you have a really strong, engaging one, it can be a huge asset to your organization. Um, and if your website is maybe not as strong or not as up to date, um, it can be something that can be a bit of a setback. Um, so one of the biggest things about having a you know, really engaging website is that it really helps you build credibility um, in your community, especially with people who don't know who you are. Um, it's really these days sort of the first impression that people have of your league. Um, I think the, the, the word of mouth method isn't as strong as it used to be. So your website is often the very first snapshot people are gonna get to see of your league. Um, and studies show that judgments on a company or organization's credibility are 75% based on the website's company design. So, you know, assuming that we're all spending, not all of us, are spending six and a half hours a day online, if we go to a website, the phenomenon is very real that if the website looks professional and is easy to navigate and is engaging, you're much more likely to find that organization credible than the, and then were the opposite true. Um, so, 
you know, it can build credibility. It can great, create a really great first impression of your league. And it also acts as something that is a really, you know, once you get it set up, a very great and easily um, editable hub to, you know, get the word out about um, your hot button issues or opportunities, the work you're doing, um, just to let people know about it quickly and easily. Um, it's a really great way to grow your membership or your network um, in a way that is safe, especially, you know, we are still very much in a pandemic, but in a way that is safe and inclusive for people who might not be able to, you know, meet with you in person. Um, your website is a great way to have a connection to them. Um, and it's a great way to foster relationships with new and potential members and stakeholders um, in an audience that is wider and more varied than I think in the past. So I find this very exciting. Um, I think, you know, uh, our capability and our potential to, to interact with new people is just very cool. Um, and a website, like I said, is very helpful with that. Um, so going on to the next slide, we're gonna get into some best practices. Um, so these, uh, I'm going to get first these focus on, you know, the technical creation and design, and then I'm going to get a little bit into like organizational maintenance of a website. Um, so uh, these are best practices that for those of you with no site or someone if you're looking to revamp yours, these are great. Um, and for those leagues, which are most of you that have existing sites and processes, I'd really encourage you to look at your site with these best practices in mind and check for any cracks or areas of improvement. Um, I think across the board, it's really important to think of a website as sort of a living collaborative document, not just something that is in stasis, especially since, you know, in the technological world, things move so fast. Um, keeping your website updated and new and engaging is really important. Um, so more on the technical side, the first thing that's really important when you're building or redesigning your website is to choose a website builder that you enjoy and find easy to use. And what I mean by a website builder, and I'll get a little bit into specific, excuse me, specifics later, is um, website builders are generally websites that are for use by the public, either for free or for a small price where you can go in and you know, enter your information in and usually you put it into a template and then it comes up and it designs a website for you. Um, many of you, you know, already know what I'm talking about, be it through My League Online, WordPress, Squarespace, any of those. Um, they vary in price and ease of use, um, but it's really important that you and your entire leadership team choose one that is going to be sustainable for you to use for as long as you need it. Um, Something that's really important to note is that a lot of these websites have um, really great quote unquote e-commerce plans. Um, so if you're a league that is looking to do any sort of uh, service trading or you know financial dealing online, it's really important to think about that while you're choosing one. Um, so if you don't take uh, membership dues online and you'd like to, this is something that's really important to think about. Um, or if you don't and you don't think your need, league needs to, that's totally fine as well. You can choose something that's a little more simple and straightforward. Um, so the next thing to think about is using a really clean, easy to navigate website design. And that link um, in the PowerPoint, which will be sent out, goes to a website that has sort of 25 of the like highest rated general just home pages. So you can see sort of what a clean website design looks like. Um, you want to make it uh, easy to navigate and really engaging. Um, it generally takes visitors um, 0.05 seconds for them to form an opinion about your website and determine where they're going to stay or leave. So um, design and having something engaging, you know, using pictures from your work is something that's going to be really important to draw people in. Um, in terms of, you know, the content of the website, the, the copy, what's written on there, um, people generally spend about 5.5 seconds looking at a website's written content. So brevity is really the soul of wit. Um, you really want your site to show who you are, what you do, and how people can get involved clearly and concisely. Um, and try to avoid using jar jargon. This is especially important for nonprofit organizations. You know, we as league members understand what all the league terms are, um, but someone who has no idea what the league is might not. And 
I think imagining that everybody who comes to the site might have no idea what the league is, but really wants to learn is a great way to be thinking about it. So especially on your homepage, try to avoid using um, a ton of league jargon. Um, the next one that I think is especially important uh, for us as like an advocacy organization is using calls to action. Um, a call to action is um, just anything that you put on your website that someone who's visiting can, you know, click on and do. So whether that be join the league, you know, a, a learn more button, clicking to your voter services page, donate, take action, anything like that. Um, lots of websites don't have calls to action and the ones that do really see a lot more engagement and a lot more interest. Um, you want to, and if, I totally meant to say this earlier, but if anybody has any questions, you can either save them to the end or, you know, unmute yourself and just say something and I will answer the question. Um, I know I'm just sort of going quickly um, here, but please feel free to ask any questions. Um, but uh, the next point is that you want to make sure you're using an accessible design. Um, I mean that in two ways. First off, in the context of diversity, equity, and inclusion, having a website that is accessible for people, um, you know, with a visual impairment or anything like that is really important. Um, that link goes to a website that has uh, tips and best practices for making your website accessible. Um, it's really just important to create an, an inclusive culture in the league and your website is a great place to be able to do that in a small way. Uh, but I also mean it in the context of just being accessible to someone outside the league. You know, you want you want the website to be welcoming and you want people who don't know what the league is to really enjoy the first impression that they have. Um, the, the next two are pretty straightforward. Um, having contact information easily available. Um, yes, Pam, I will be sending this uh, PowerPoint out as soon as I'm done and, or tomorrow morning probably, but these links will all be, you know, clickable in the, in the uh, document that I send out. Um, having your contact information easily available and easy to see on the website page, especially the homepage is really important. 44% um, of visitors will leave a company's website if there's no contact information or phone number. I know that I have done that personally. Um, so if you know we want people to get involved, we want to foster collaboration, um, making it easy for them to do so is, is important. Um, and then the last one, and you know, this is something that I really hadn't thought of until I was building up resources for uh, this webinar, is don't overlook mobile usage. Um, and by that, I mean just how your website might appear on someone's cell phone. Um, nearly half of website traffic in the past couple of years have, has come from mobile devices. So I'd encourage you to, you know, hop on your phone or have your webmaster hop on your phone, hop on their phone and, you know, look at your website on your phone and see, is it easy to use? Um, is it still as engaging? Um, many website design tools have a little mobile view sort of thing you can toggle on while you're designing them so you can see how it will look. Um, and thanks, Adrian. Yes, it's important to see if it resizes. I've definitely been on websites where I go on my phone and things are like, way too big or way too tiny. Um, and it's important to, you know, across all mediums that people might be looking at it, making sure it's accessible. Um, we can go on to the next slide. Um, so these are just a couple of league, like actual league websites that sort of have really strong um, home pages. The first one is national. Um, you know, it's very engaging. The colors are pleasing to the eye and the you know, the font is contrasting with the background so that it's easy to read. Um, sorry, man. Uh, the, there's a couple of calls to action and then the, you can see the toolbar on the top makes it very easy for people to navigate their way around. Um, now we can go on to the next one. Um, this is Center County's website. Um, on the, it, the screenshot is a little weird, but there is a very, you know, easily understandable sort of navigation toolbar on the top. They have, you know, they really make the most of having concise text and um, then they have these really engaging hyperlinked buttons you can click on to sort of be entered into different areas of the website and their social media channels are right there for everybody to see, which is really important. <clears throat> 
And the last one is the Philadelphia League. Um, so they have, they make a really good use both of calls to action and navigation, as well as, you know, uh, having really engaging visuals, um, you know, matching up pictures with the sections of the website that are important, I think is a really great idea and a really great template. Um, so this is obviously not an exhaustive list of league websites that are really great. These are just a couple that um, if you're looking for something league specific, as an example, uh, they're a great place to start. Um, so then just a couple of best practices in terms of like, you know, once our site is up, Kathy, I'm not sure which site Builder National used. Um, they may well use Club Express. I am not 100% sure, um, but that is a great question. I don't think um, so. I, I, I mean, so National obviously has so many more resources than we do. So they certainly have a paid contractor build their website out. And I'm not, you know, they use like a bunch of really sophisticated integrations like Salesforce and Salsa. So I imagine, you know, it was a custom built site for them. Yep. Um, so just in terms of, you know, organizational best practices for maintaining your website, like I said, um, I think treating a website as a living document that needs constant maintenance is really important. Um, but I don't think it needs to be as much work uh, as, as, you know, some people might, like the world might have us think it is. Um, so just right off the bat, um, it's really important to have a process in place for regular updates to your content and just looking over the website to make sure, you know, links still work, it's still loading well, all that sort of, you know, nitty gritty tech stuff. Um, it's really important to keep content up to date and have to, to have the website remain engaging and accurate, especially in the tech world, you know, things move so quickly. It's important to keep up. Um, so this process, you know, whatever works for you guys as board members and as for your webmasters, but the important thing is that everyone on your board or steering committee understands what the process is and that it's doable without being overwhelming for any one person. Um, in, in that same vein, uh, it's really important to be communicating regularly across your board or steering committee about what is happening on the tech side. I think sometimes especially in collaborative, you know, leadership teams, it's kind of, you can get into a situation where sometimes the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Um, but it's really important for, you know, the entire leadership to know what's being done, even if it's just a quick email update every month, something like that. Um, I think of it as though, like, if your entire board were all writing one paper together, you would want to understand what was written in the introduction, even if you wrote the conclusion, right? So, um, again, whatever works for you guys uh, as a process, just keeping communication and collaboration um, open will eventually lead you to have uh, an engaging website that is easy to maintain and keep up. Um, listening to feedback, I think is really important, uh, especially from outside visitors or each other. Um, I think it's really easy. I know I do this all the time, Meg can attest, where you work on something you're totally zeroed in and you work on something a ton. And then as soon as there's another eye on it, there's, you know, improvements that can be made that you didn't realize because you were so focused in. Um, so an outside perspective is really helpful. And I will get into this a little bit later, but I am more than happy to help bounce ideas off of if any, if anyone ever needs that. Um, and then the last one, you know, I think I know that maintaining a website is nothing short of a project. Um, but simplicity is key, and I think it's really important just to not overload your team or overload your capacity. Um, I know that we're all working with what resources we have and just know that we're all doing really well with what we have, and we will continue to do really well with what we have. So uh, on that happy note, I'm going to go into a little bit about some specifics. Um, these are website builders that I have done a little bit of research on, either because I was asked to, you know, just from various local leads, or because I have identified them as ones that are really easy to use or affordable, um, that sort of thing. So the first one is My League Online. Um, I know a bunch of leagues use this, a bunch of leagues across the country use this. Um, it is really created by leagues for leagues. So it was developed by 
The California League, um, as a website builder that is specified for league use, branding, and content. Um, so that's really nice. Like you're working with people who know what a league website is, right? Um, you can get action alerts and news from LWV US made directly available on your My League online, which is really cool. It kind of eliminates an extra step. Um, you know, there's league specific templates like specific membership pages and about pages and that sort of thing um, come in with the builder and then you're hosted under the, the lwv.org domain. Um, so I've included the sign up link and I've also included Milo's tutorial like video library. Um, one thing to note is that I personally this is the only one that I'm going to suggest to any of you that I don't have a ton of experience with. Um, so if you use Milo or if you think that it's something that could be really effective for your league, I highly encourage reaching out to their tech support um, for help assistance with getting set up as, you know, a first recourse. Um, in terms of price, it's $400 a year, which turns out to be, you know, about $33 a month. There is a $200 one-time setup fee. Um, what's interesting to note is that you can migrate, have someone migrate all of your existing content onto Milo for another fee. So if you're willing, if you have the resources and you don't want to do any, and, you're, and you don't really want to do a ton of setup, you can have someone do it for you. Um, so the long and short is that Milo is great for building a league specific website and your money is going to go to supporting another state league. However, there are less expensive options and not that this really a ton matters, but I might not be able to provide you the best tech support I possibly could. Um, but we can go on to the next one. So the next three that I'm going to share, these are all, you know, just public website creators. You all have probably visited a website that has been made with one of these. Um, and like I said, I put, pulled them out on ease of use and affordability were sort of the things I was really looking for. Um, so the first one is called Wix. Um, it is generally regarded as one of the best overall uh, website uh, features. Um, Ray, that's a great idea. We did do a survey a little while ago and did ask what people use. There are several leagues that use Milo. I know Lower Marion and Narberth does. Um, thank you, Kathy. Uh, Kathy, I agree with you. I also find Milo clunky and lockdown design wise, but that's just my opinion. Um, but Ray, I think that's a great idea. I think the greatest resource that we have is each other. I know that's a little cliche, but I, everybody has a great wealth of experience with this kind of stuff. Um, so, but the, the, going back to, to Wix here, it's generally regarded as one of the best overall website designers and website template builders. It's really simple to use. It has what people call a drag and drop design. So you, if you've ever used like MailChimp or Constant Contact, um, you like pull sections in and then you can kind of just place columns and type text into there or put pictures in and it makes a template for you. Um, Sandy, it depends on the website builder, but some you can create password protected pages. I know you can on Squarespace. Um, it really just depends on the website builder you're looking for. I think most of them probably could have a, a password protected page, which I know isn't quite the same as Milo, but you know it could sort of be tailored a little bit to be members only. Um, so Wix has a really highly rated e-commerce function. So again, if you're a league that's interested in looking at taking dues online, um, that's another important thing to think about. Um, it has a great free plan, which you can use as long as you like. There's no trial or anything, but it is a little limited. So if you want things like e-commerce or you want a website with a little more bells and whistles, um, you probably will want to get a premium plan. They start at $14 a month, so they're a little pricier. And some of the others I'm going to show you, but they have a lot of really great features. So I've included I've included a video step by step Wix tutorial. It's like half an hour long, and it shows you ground up how to build a website using Wix. I've included a tutorial like this for all of the ones I'm about to show you. Um, but Wix in general is sort of the best if you're new to website building, but you want to start off the bat with something that has a lot of bells and whistles for a reasonably low price. We can move on. Um, so Weebly is generally understood as one that's like the best value for your money. 
Um, it is one of the most affordable sites to use, especially if you want an e-commerce plan. Um, it has the cheapest e-commerce plan. It's like $6 a month or something. Um, it has a really, really generous free plan um, as well. Um, so, but what, what I've understand about it is that it might not be easy to use as others, but it is more affordable. It does have that drag and drop design and you do end up with a very nice looking website. But I think as I understand it, it just takes a little more patience to in the design aspect of it. Um, so it's really, it's good for those who are new to website building, but not necessarily if you are going to want long-term growth or something like Wix, which just has a ton of features. Um, I've included a comparison of Wix versus Weebly. Um, I do have a resource that does other comparisons and then another tutorial should you decide to use it. Um, so Weebly is the best if you're really looking for something affordable, um, but you're willing or you have someone who is willing to spend a little bit more time and patience building the website itself. Like it's not hard, it just takes time, that's all. And then the last one is GoDaddy. GoDaddy is fast and easy. Um, it's the fastest website creator. It has, unlike the other ones and unlike many other ones, it has a design assistant that makes it really user-friendly. So um, whereas with Wix or Weebly or WordPress, you're sort of putting content in yourself and designing it, GoDaddy, you put in your information and then it designs a website for you and then you customize the website. So if you're really bulking at the thought of having to build something from the ground up, GoDaddy is probably a great option. Um, I will say what you gain in speed and simplicity, you do lose out a little bit in complexity or different design options. So they're not, it's gonna, it's real, they're really great simple designs, but they're not the most like aesthetically smooth as other ones might be. Um, they do have a free plan. Again, it is a little bit limited. If you want something like e-commerce or if you want a search engine on your website, um, you will have to go with a premium plan. Um, they range from $10 to $20 a month. And the nice thing about all of these is they, they do have free trials for their, free plan, for their premium plans. So if you're not sure, but you wanted to see if the plan worked for you, you could try it for free for a week or a month. Um, and then if it doesn't work, you can just go back to the free plan. And again, there's another tutorial. So GoDaddy is best if you are an absolute beginner and you want something built fast, but are willing to have a little bit of a more limited design and limited options on the design. <clears throat> um, and then just to wrap up before we get into you know, discussion and other questions, um, here's just some other resources I found. Um, Kathy, I, will, I didn't do WordPress because it is a little bit more advanced in terms of the design. WordPress is another great option. Um, it is pretty easy to use, pretty user intuitive, but I really was looking for ones that are a little simpler to use. Um, Sandy, I will get to your question in just a minute because that does require a thought out answer. Um, Squarespace is good as well. So WordPress and Squarespace are great. They're a little pricier and they're not as intuitive to use in terms of building. Um, what, these resources here do go into those more in depth if you're interested in looking at those as well. Um, so the first one, you know, everybody knows my office hours. Um, that is the same link every week, every Thursday from two to four. If you click on it at any time, you will see my shining Zoom face. Um, so, like I said, most of these website builders, including WordPress and Squarespace, I can provide technical assistance with. It might be a little bit of a collaborative effort, but I should be able to help, um, help you figure out whatever issue you might have. Um, and again, even if you, there isn't a technical issue and you need, you just wanna bounce ideas off of someone or you want someone to take another look, I'm more than happy to help with that as well. Um, this next website, which is, especially if you're looking you know, you don't like any of the options I gave you and you want to find something else, Website Builder Expert is a great place to start. Um, they have really detailed breakdowns of different builders you can use, including WordPress and Squarespace um, or, you know, whatever else you might want to use. And they have um, tutorials and best practices. It's just a great place to sort of familiarize yourself with the process. Um, I included some more uh, website design tutorials from beginner to expert, and these really are just from very basic all the way up to really complicated coding. So if you have someone who wants to 
take a deep dive, this is a great tool. Um, another list of nonprofit specific website best practices to keep in mind. And then this last one is the one personally I am the most excited about because I will probably use it if any of you ask me for tech help. Um, this is a YouTube channel I found from professional sort of IT consultants. Um, and all of the tutorials I included for the examples I have are in there, um, but it's just videos that really concisely explain how to use these different builders. There's one for WordPress, there's one for Squarespace, there's videos that compare WordPress and Squarespace. Um, they're all about a half an hour to 45 minutes long. So if you um, need tech help, it is a great um, place to start. Um, and with that, I, Meg, if you can stop share, we can go um, into questions and discussion. I'm gonna look through the chat very quickly. Um, so as we said, Squarespace is um, really good as well. We use Squarespace, it is a little pricier. Um, easiest to maintain update. Oh, Sandy, back to your question. It's important if you are um, any, so any of these that I suggest, suggested are probably pretty easy to maintain in terms of design. They're really pretty intuitive once you watch, if you, once you like watch a little tutorial, they're really pretty easy to understand. Um, I will say some website builders do a, like have a process where if you set up your website and you use different templates and you push the website live, you then can't change the templates you've picked. So that's an important thing to know. Website Builder Expert has all of that information. Um, but you know, if you're thinking that you might wanna do an overhaul or change a template or something like that, that's important to consider. Um, I know, actually, I'm not gonna say, cause I can't remember, Wix or Weebly, one of them does and one of them doesn't is um, what I'll say. Um, Club Express. Pam, to be totally honest with you, I don't know a ton about Club Express. We could probably figure it out together if you needed tech help. Um, I know the league I, it briefly. Yeah, the league used it briefly. Um, it Club Express isn't just a website designer; it's also a CRM, so it hosts membership information. Um, so if you're at a point where you are thinking you want to have like a CRM as well, um, I can help with other ones. I could probably figure out Club. I can. You know what? We can work on Club Express together if anybody has questions. Let me um, let me just speak briefly to our experience using it at the state level. That would be so great. I'll just start off by saying that the Pittsburgh League uses Club Express. They're a huge fan of it. Um, and um, they the, the benefit of Club Express is that they have a brand partnership with the National League. So a lot of things like similar to Milo, like brand standards, our member, the membership portal login, those are things that you can also take advantage of as a local league. Um, yeah, CRM means customer yeah. relationship management. So Sorry essentially about that. it's the database where you keep your members and your email subscribers' emails all in one place. Um, so that functionality is is good. Um, and the benefit of, of having kind of your membership dues in one place with, with Club Express is that National will eventually be able to just take your dues directly through Club Express as opposed to going through the state league. That's, the, that's what they promised. It's not actually happening at this point, which is why we as the state league decided to not pursue working with them as an organization. It was kind of like they made a, a lot of promises about how the membership database would work that didn't actually come to fruition. But I do know that Pittsburgh is a big fan of it. So if you want to talk about that or explore that. Um, I know the Pittsburgh League is, would be happy to chat. They're big fans. Um, and just a note about uh, using a customer relationship management tool in general. Um, they tend to be, from my experience, can be a little bit pricier and a little bit more involved to use. Um, so I think if you already have a good system for tracking your membership and your dues, um, I would you know consider whether you want to switch to a CRM as opposed to just something where you can build a website. Um, like a, that is completely y'all's own decision. Um, Roseanne brought up a really good question about security for e-commerce e and keeping league info accurate and true. 
Um, so a lot of these website builders, I know Squarespace does, has this thing called two-factor identification where you essentially have to set up like two ways to log in every time you use it. So for example, um, when we use Squarespace, like once a month, I will have to enter our login credentials and then we'll also get texted a code. Um, so there's plenty of ways uh, that you can increase security for, especially for e-commerce um, and for your website in general. Um, all of these sites that have e-commerce are reputable in terms of keeping credit card information safe. So if people are worried about putting information on a website that they don't necessarily trust, um, using these reputable website builders, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, Jamie brought up a great point. There's a lot of info on league websites, uh, Milo and Club Express on the new Media League Facebook group. So if you have questions about that, highly recommend joining it. Um, so yeah, that is now that we've called through the chat, um, does anybody else have any questions? You know, you can just unmute and ask me, or if anybody has experience, I know Terry brought up a really good point where you said you've used WordPress and had a great experience with it. Um, so the list I gave is definitely not exhaustive. Um, there are hundreds of website builders you could use. Um, but if anybody has particular experience or questions, um, please uh, feel free. Sam, yeah. Sam or Meg, are either of you willing to crit uh, critique one of our websites, my website in particular? Yeah, I mean, Meg's nodding. I would be willing um, if you, you know, wanted to come into my office hours and do that. Um, I would absolutely be willing to to take a look at it and give you some feedback. Yeah. Great, thank you. Take it with a grain. I am not a you know website design professional, so take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. But Sam, I you can have a young person's eye, and I've that's a, a valuable thing. <laughs> yes, I've got a Gen Z <laughs> eye, so I, can, I would absolutely be willing to to look at anybody's website. Um, oh, God, God knows website. I'm not a website specialist either. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, two heads is better than one as far as I'm concerned with this kind of stuff. Uh, Sandy and then Roseanne. Yeah, I just wanted to mention. So because uh, Jamie mentioned it, um, we do use Milo, um, mm -hmm. our webmaster, who is who doesn't have a lot of time right now to work on our site. She worked with the California League to redesign it so it looks like the California format, which is different, mm -hmm. right? So the one that they, I think, still offer, the basic one, um, they've now changed and it looks much better. Okay. Um, the challenge is, I think you have to go directly with them and work with them. I don't know how hard that is. Um, she did say it took some time, but she was able to figure out how to redesign it so it looked has a more clean look. Mm -hmm. If you go to the California website, you'll see it. So just a just a thought. If you want to stick with your Milo, if you have Milo and you want to stick with it and just want to kind of re redesign it, there may there's some options there if you want to work with them. Thank you, Thank you so much, Cindy. Uh, Roseanne, did you have a comment or a question? You're on mute, Roseanne. <laughs> um, so you mentioned a lot of websites do do leagues or has anybody had experience where you have one and you don't like it and then you move again does that become a issue with the uh, public not recognizing the new one or um, you know especially if you said some of them are free and blah 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 and how much effort is that like moving, moving websites completely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a website master. But. I can tell you from our, so the state is actually undergoing a website redesign right now. And I can tell you that it's not necessarily technically difficult, but it is a project. It is, it, um, yeah, there's no other way to get around that. It, it's a time suck. Um, I think it's worthwhile. Um, you know, if you are really looking for a new design, um, I don't think generally people will have, I mean, the National League just completely up revamped its website, and I don't think there were any problems with, um, you know, recognizing the website as long as the URL doesn't change. Um, Meg brought up a good point, you know, it really depends on how much content you're wanting to transfer from your old site, you know, the State League, we have 
lots and lots of content and you may well also have lots and lots of content, but if you don't, it might not be, it might not be as crazy. It might just be, you know, a, a few hours of concerted sitting down and, you know, just plug and chug moving things over. Um, but it, it will take a little bit of time. And Can I ask a, a follow-up question to that? Mm -hmm. So um, since we've been working on like series and you know, both at different levels, is this the place where you would be able to put those templates that have been created would be in the website and then you just take them down where they're not valid anymore? Or, or templates that are created throughout the league for different things? Um, you like just them. different league resources? Is that what I'm you mean? Sorry, say, say that again, please. You mean just where you would house different like league resources? Well, is there an option to create? you know, a drop down box for stuff, something like that. Is that the idea? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. Neither do I, but I have, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> um, um, in terms of, you know, housing information, like tools on building a website, you know, that is something we could probably create a drop down on our website about, um, in terms of housing, legal. no, I didn't, I'm, excuse me, I didn't interrupt, but I, that's not what I was getting. At. I was okay. getting like, you know, like um, I'm on the subcommittee that's doing things with civics, and we're creating right. templates. So oh. with those, let's be able to be brought into then to like a web page, and yeah, I don't be easy I, enough. I don't see why not. It should be it should be easy enough um, to migrate that content, whether you link it so a lot of our stuff you know is linked either to a pdf of a document or to a google doc that you know okay. is just view only um it should be it should be easy enough um i know it's pretty straightforward on squarespace so i imagine any of these other ones it'll be pretty easy to, to okay. figure that out yep. got it now thanks of course all right any other questions comments for the good of the order I feel like we just went through so much information. Ray, did you raise your hand or did I? I did. Um, Jamie put in the chat that she thought you had to be a 501c3 to use Club Express. I didn't think that was the case. Do you know, Meg? Or I don't believe that's the Jamie? case either because they really are trying to appeal to local leagues across the country, which are majority C4. So yeah, that's I wouldn't I anticipate to. that issue. I did a quick look on their website and I couldn't find it, but if anyone runs into that issue, let me know. Yeah, we should be able to help with that um, in terms of setup. Um, well, great. Um, thank you all for your awesome questions and comments. You know, these were thoughts that I hadn't even thought of when making this. So it was really helpful to chat with you guys. Um, if you have any other questions that pop into your head, you know, my office hours, I'm on Slack. Um, I can, here, I'll put my email in the chat for anybody. Yeah, Pam? One last question. So when the webmaster is creating content for the website, mm -hmm. um, does the webmaster, in many of these cases, does the webmaster review it first with the board before mm -hmm. they act? you know, put it online or what's, you know, do these leagues have review processes before something gets pushed out to the public? That is a great question that I don't know the answer to, to be totally honest with you. I, off the top of my head, I would say that, you know, having at least some sort of process to review content so that another pair of eyes is on it besides the person who writes the content I think it's always helpful. I mean, Meg reviews everything I write before I put it up on the website. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a formal approval process. It certainly can be. Um, I think it's really whatever works for your board. But just in terms of, you know, basic editing for conventions and grammar, I think it's really important to have another set of eyes um, before something goes live. Because the other thing that's important is that the internet you know, everything is always on the internet all the time. And um, even if something gets changed, someone may have seen it and everything that goes up on a website is public facing. Um, so yeah, I'm always a fan of editing work. <laughs> um, it I know. also depends on the content a little bit. So 
creating a, web, a page that just says here's upcoming voter registration drive, you know, voter registration dates is different than saying, you know, we're drafting a new policy and I'm putting it on our website without approval from the board. So I think it really just depends. Okay. Um, but yeah, all right, I'm gonna check the chat one more time. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you guys all so much for joining me. Feel free to reach out if anything else comes up. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday evening. Happy International Women's Day. Go gals, go leaguers. <laughs> all right. Thank Bye, you, everybody. Sir. Of course. <laughs>